So I'm gonna do a long trim today on Carlo. When was the last time we cut your hair? It's been like a month, right? Okay, cool. I've done a long trim on him for a while now. I just, he's got good hair. It always turns out looking pretty nice. So I figured we would do this one today. I'm just gonna start out getting it totally wet. I grew up pretty good. And then I'm going to do like a nice subtle taper in the back, which is probably the most tricky part of the haircut, at least for me. Um, I think when I started doing these, it was a little intimidating because I knew like fades and stuff. And I do have some cosmetology experience, but I think a lot of cool haircuts that leave a lot of length and doing them the right way as a barber sounds very intimidating and it kind of is at first luckily i had a little bit of scissor experience that i could fall back on to just get comfortable with the idea of doing it so i got it all wet and now i'm just gonna do a parting here try to make it nice and clean i learned this doing it watching uh, the Ruzel guys. And I really liked it because, especially this thing, they have a thing about using hair clips. And I, I really did feel the same way, but I was really unsure about how to go about parting the hair and keeping it out of the way without the use of clips. Um, so they do the half horseshoe parting. And I, I mean, for years now, since I went out there, and I adopted that as well on most things I do. Occasionally I gotta use a clip here and there, but most of the time this works fine. I'm gonna use this clipper. I'm gonna pick all this up. And what I like to do, because the hard the thing I had a kind of difficult time with in the beginning was just trying to figure out how far away I should do this and keeping it consistent as I went and worked away around his head. But I have a little thing that I do that works for me that I thought was kind of cool. And that's just, I use my finger to kind of measure it out. So I'll pick this up and we're working top down on this long trim. And then I use my finger to gauge how far away I wanna go. This gives me a base and I don't have to guess like how far away did I do it over here and over there, it's just my finger. I'll try to hold this completely straight, stand up straight out of here. I usually go at least two or three times so I know that I got everything. And that's your baseline now. So you can see I can pull the rest of this hair out of the way. This isn't cut yet. So I pull this up again. That's the line. It's right there. And that's going to be your guide as you go. And I know he has some hair down here by his ear. We'll get to that later. So I have a way of doing that. But same deal. I'm going to make my way all the way to about here. I'm just picking it up. Same thing. Pick it up. And now if I don't, I don't have to use my finger. I can just, because I have the guide. Some more there. But I am trying to just be careful that I don't cut anything I don't, you know, that I want to keep. So I'm just going nice and slow. And also just to show you guys what I'm doing. So now you can see, you hold this up. Well, it's up maybe there. It's just a nice straight line. Straight line. And I said I was gonna do a taper in the back here, which I am. We'll get to that also later. If I don't get everything perfect, that's okay. Cause I'm about to go through with my scissors. And then down here, I'm actually going to open the arm all the way just so that I have a little more buffer room in his neckline. And then I'm going to just roughly put in this taper. I don't want this taper to be like super tight 
and I don't want it to be very high. When I went out there to Rotterdam, they showed me how to do this two finger taper, and that just keeps everything balanced. So you could actually use your two fingers to look and see how high you're going. Like, I don't want to go much higher than that. Neck hair goes all different directions. It's kind of, so sometimes I might have to go a couple different which ways just to get it. That's fine. But like I said, I'm not trying to overdo it. It's like a subtle paper. But that's a good start. And I'm going to switch to scissors. You guys already know. If I could avoid going to palm to palm, because it's a little uncomfortable for me, uncomfortable for me, I will. But holding the scissors differently. I'm just going to take a look. There's a little bit of stuff I missed on this baseline area. That's OK. And now I'm just going to get this other stuff, particularly by his ear. I could do it with the clippers, I suppose. I just always feel like I'm going to get the guy the clipper on his ear or something so I like to do it this way but I can still see what I did with the clipper and you can do like the part I just initially did with the clipper you can do that with the scissor if you want to start out if you just rather use scissors for the whole thing do your baseline and then make sections and do it that way the idea with using the clipper is just a little faster so sometimes the shop's like really busy and I just really need to knock things out. Um, that's how I do it. And these scissors, actually these small ones here I'm using are the ones I use for this type of stuff a lot of the time. I've got a bunch of different scissors that I use for different things. Um, and I'll go over that in a little bit. But I know most people probably only have maybe one or two pairs. That's cool. I didn't get them all at one time, that would have been crazy expensive, but just over the years I've managed to get one here, get one there, until I had all the stuff I needed. And what I do is, because we haven't done anything on this side yet, and I haven't even looked at the stuff that I combed out of the way, I just start taking sections and pulling it over this way. And that'll also swing all this hair this way, and then that gives me the room I need to do the other side. So let's pull this over and match this hair with this right here. And I think a lot of this initially, you saw me just blunt cut it. If you want to, if it's better for you to take this and, and do some point cutting so it's not so choppy, or to kind of reduce that possibility of there being lines after you dry it, cool, do it. This here, there. It's not even, so I can get that. But it's cool. You can see the line, the guide that you made earlier, and use that to help you cut everything else. So that's the whole idea behind it. A lot of these concepts I learned very early on, because like I said, I started in cosmetology school first. But at the time, I didn't really understand what I was learning. It wasn't until a few years later that I was like, oh, all right, I get what these concepts they were trying to show me. But I was really confused at the time. I'm gonna do the other side, the half horseshoe on this side. And then I'm just repeating what I just did over here. I'm gonna pick this up, grab it, and use my finger as the anchor point. And get the baseline in there or my guide, or whatever you want to call it. It's pretty good, like three times, two, three times. It's usually what I do. And now I'm gonna grab this part right here. And you can see I'm still using my finger. And you see that is longer than this now. So if you pick this up, you see this extra. Clean section here. There's that, and then there's this stuff down here that's considerably longer now. That's okay. Good. I've seen people do long trims a couple of different ways. 
you know, I always tell people, if you don't like the way I'm doing this, fine. Um, goal is always just to see if maybe you get one little tip or trick that you like out of it. Because everybody's got their own way of doing stuff. That's cool. I've learned a lot watching other people who do things totally different. But maybe I pick up one thing. I'm like, I'm going to try that. Actually, I know I've done that in classes I've done, or not, that I've done, that I've seen. It's a little dry down here, so I'm going to get this. I'm just using what I did as my reference and then working my way down. This is like, when you get closer to this neck area, of course, it's going to taper. Because I'm going shorter, a little shorter, a little shorter. Um, but when I first tried this, it was really weird. It was a foreign concept to me. I was too afraid of like, I'm gonna mess this up. I'm gonna leave too much or I'm gonna take too much air. Just practice. Good, good. Nice now. Cool. I'm gonna check out what I did and see where maybe the clipper didn't quite get what I wanted. I'll clean it up with the scissors. And I don't know if anybody's ever used a trimmer to do a trimmer over a comb, but I like to do that a lot, just for like these little tiny areas maybe I'm having some difficulty getting to. Sometimes people, and it depends on their hair and the haircut, but they'll keep this hair here that they can just kind of tuck back behind the ear. I'm not gonna do that, but you can, it's up to you. I'm use this and this one, just cause it's got a little more horsepower. I like this one for trimmer over a comb. I love this other trimmer, um, and I use it a lot. And it's a cheap trimmer, which is cool. But this one's not cheap, but it is definitely stronger than that one. And this is where the taper is going to be, so I'm just getting this really, really close, but not like super close. Like I said, I like that other trimmer for most things, but I do like that I have this for, so he's got really thick hair. So just something with a little more oomph to get this out of there. Good. Good. I'm making sure this is all combed this way, because if I comb this way and line it, I might be cutting some stuff that, on his neckline area that I don't want to, and it'll grow out and look a little odd. So I'm making sure this hair is going this direction as I'm getting it, the trimmer. But it looks okay. It's a pretty good, decent start to this whole deal. Um, Use this Rusal grooming spray. They have one that you can just dump in your hand. That was actually the first one they had. I like this one. Makes it easy for me to make sure I got like blanket coverage with the spray. Okay, I'm gonna blow dry this and I'm gonna use, everybody knows what blow dryer this is. These are expensive, I'm not gonna lie. Dyson has one just for professionals. You go on their website and you, uh, got to send them a copy of like a cosmetology license or a barber license. It's a, a professional model. It's like a hundred dollars cheaper as a longer warranty and a longer cord. And then I think a couple of the attachments might be a little different from the one that they sell at the store. And I've had this thing for a while. I take pretty good care of it. I usually start on a lot of hair back here first, but on these long trims or some pumps, I like to start on the side more. As long as you don't cover up the wet hair with dry hair, you can get it all dry. Cool, it's usually easier to do that here, but sometimes I like to start on the side. And then the front here, I may hit it with some cold air at the end, because that'll just help set it. Um, but it's already staying pretty high, no problem. So, Okay, all I'm doing is I'm repeating what I did with the wet hair and with the scissor work, but now I'm doing it with these uh, Mitsutani Scorum Edition shears. 
and I don't know if everybody knows, the first pair of, I know a lot of people in the States, they call them thinning shears. I really worked hard to change my vocabulary, and now I call them blending shears, because it's not thinning. And also, guys don't want anything to be thinning, especially with their hair. Um, but the big difference is the teeth are switched. So most people, or at least ones that most, I know I'm familiar with or have seen the most, it's the other way around and then this blade is a straight line. The big difference with these is that's um, inverted and then this blade's curved. Um, that allows you to do some things that might be a little harder to do in the normal version that most people have seen around like what I'm doing. I can do point cutting and slide cutting and I use these scissors just like I would use a regular pair of scissors. In fact, these get used probably the most. And then I have some other really long ones that I like to use for certain things. And I'll probably use those towards the end of the haircut. And at this point, the way I like to do with this part with the bulk removal, it's a little more me just eyeballing what's going on with his hair. So I'll, I'll constantly be like, just kind of combing it and looking at it and trying to find like even here, there's like an area that's a little heavy and not, God, there's some fly in here bugging me. Oh, he'll be on YouTube. Um, yeah, I got distracted, what was I saying? Um, I'm just looking at what the hair is doing naturally as I'm going at this point to remove bulk and I'll just grab it. If I think there's an area that's suspect, I'll just kind of pick it up and take a look at it and get it like this until it all looks like it's all going back smooth and just like more streamlined. Um, there's probably a more correct or accurate way to do it. I just feel like for me that works best. Um, when I first saw, especially the Scorum videos, the first time I saw them cutting hair, like a lot of people, I was really impressed. I was like, man, that's really good. Um, and the haircuts and the photography and the video is all beautiful stuff, but I'd watch them do this part and the guy would like do this stuff, whether it was Rob or Lean. And I was like, holy shit, like, what is he doing there? So it, the, when I first started trying to do that kind of stuff, I was really, I didn't really know what I was doing. It was like a fake it till you make it type of situation. Um, then when I went out there, took the class, I was able to ask some questions. I had a lot of questions. I was like, that was really impressive. I learned a lot, but now I have more questions about what you were doing. Um, but I'm sure some of it might be a little bit of showmanship. I mean, they are in a really cool video, but um, there is a method to it. There is a reason for it. They're removing the bulk. They're also trying to get the hair. And that's, sometimes I'll do this, like slide cut. Where's my other comb? To help assist it to naturally go back in this direction. So you can pick it up and do it like this. Um, and by doing it this way, instead of the way I, you were watching me do it, I'm just getting little pieces, but I'm slide cutting. It'll just help the hair sweep back and then down and then down here where this taper is going to be i'm just going to get it the old school way just get it a little bit like that this down here is kind of the trickiest part of doing this haircut because like i said it's really easy to throw it off balance and maybe take the taper too high or make it a little too tight it depends on the haircut and the client and what you are trying to do um, and I'm going to go over that a couple different ways at the end here. But anywhere that looks a little chunky or like I didn't get it, I'm just lightly dusting it with these. Again, I don't know if it's like correct, but it's just the way I've, it's worked for me in doing it. If you want to do it in very regimented sections and, you know, that's cool, do it. this portion of the haircut. That's just what I like to do. So I'm just watching it, looking at it. And instead of getting it straight across, getting rid of the length, I'm just point cutting it, knocking out some of the weight in between. 
And I just got all these sharpened. Um, sent them in the mail, sent them to Mitsutani headquarters. I didn't need anything too crazy, so I believe they stayed in San Francisco and just got sharpened up and sent back. But they're really nice, um, very personable, and it's pretty quick. I just get, because I sent them certified and stuff, because I don't want to get lost in the mail. Um, I don't trust anybody else to do it. There's probably somebody um, around that I could go to, but I like the peace of mind of going like, nope, the experts got it. Um, Cause they're expensive scissors and they're, I mean, they're really important. It'd be like a chef's knives or something. I just don't want them to, don't want to lose them. Don't want to damage them. I know that they've been doing this forever. So I'd rather them do it. I'm gonna use these other ones too now. These actually take a considerable amount of hair less. And they don't, I don't know if they're gonna make a version of these or if they do. They just told me these were, and I've already said it, but they're from like the 70s. They had a couple of pairs left. And I just told them I really want some blending shears, but I want long ones. So I can just knock out a whole side or when I pick up the hair on the top, I like to do this just get little pieces you can see already how much more it's cooperating but they take because there's more teeth or yeah more teeth and they're a little more spaced out but these don't take as much as those smaller ones believe it or not same deal here you can see this hair is kind of doing one of these which isn't necessarily bad i just i want it to cooperate a little more than it is um I don't want every haircut to look the same. Everybody's got like little things that their hair's doing that could make it unique. So it's more like a custom, just for you haircut. And then of course there's like pitfall areas, maybe like an area where the hair's like got a crazy whirl or something. And you're like, oh damn, what am I gonna do? Um, but then you judo it and use that to your advantage if you can, sometimes you can't. And you're just like, all right, I can't do anything with this part. I'm going to have to avoid this area. I'm going to have to figure out a way to incorporate it that works or makes sense with what I'm doing. Um, but that's more like what I, like I said I was doing. I'm just watching it. I'm just going, okay, it's doing that. It's doing that. So I'm going back down here where the, this taper area is, which looks, it's all right. Um, but the cool thing is I did enough work down here before that I don't have to like shoehorn a taper in there um, and I'm actually not going to hold this the normal way I'm going to go the arm open but I'm going to go down and that's because it won't cut as much It it because I don't want like a super tight taper necessarily but I want it to be soft, like a more subtle one, but I do need to put a taper in there. And by flipping this around, I'm not aggressively cutting the hair. You can hear it's cutting, but it's not taking way too much. I'm going with like the natural growth. I actually learned that kind of recent. That was the thing that I learned when I went to class uh, in England. I just took the idea that that person showed me and incorporated it into this. So I'll move this arm a little more. So then I'm just going a little bit lower towards the bottom. And then I'll close it and I'll probably use like a half guard and clean up the rest. And then I might down here not use a guard at all. I never thought of using clippers down here that way, but just trying stuff. I was like, oh, that, that might be a good way to do like a more, like, like I want it to be tapered, but not like screaming. I just put a taper in there. Um, maybe have it look like a taper that maybe grew out a little bit. But I've also done ones with really tight tapers. And then down here, I don't want any hair because the neck hair, I know for me, that's the thing I love to get rid of the most when I'm getting my own hair cut. I want that to last. Because that'll grow out in a couple days. Same deal. Just open this back 
up. Now I'll go the other way. Just a little bit here. again just a little bit to get that little shelfy area out of there I do try to make it like systematic or it's like I go to this to this this I'm done but it's just if I'm completely honest that's just not what I do if I want to switch back or whatever I want to do one side different it's just the way I do it um, not saying right or wrong but try to have some basic steps and then do, you know, kind of get things the way I want, how I want. I do feel like on a neck, like whether you're doing a beard or something down here or on the back of someone's, it's always like, the hair usually is going all different directions. I even have one client where it's all going up, so I gotta get it this way. But it is tricky sometimes to get that taper the way I really want it to look. And it's because of that. It's because the hair just changes direction so much. I'm just listening for it. You hear that little crunch noise. Cool. I'm going to throw a little shaving cream and just clean up this neck area. And then I'll... One more little once over and we should be good to go. Some lather. Okay. I like the old one better. They had like an old model that I just felt like all around was a better lather machine. I don't know why they changed it, but it is what it is. Um, I'm gonna use this razor. I've got like the feather razors. I really like those for a lot of things, especially like skin fades and stuff. Sorry, this is like a train wreck. I've been really, really pushing to get better with these, which is the old school Honan Strop one. I think you guys have seen it before. But these can be sanitized in the uh, barbicide or I have a uh, UV light that'll kill all the bacteria and stuff. But I do like using these. It's just a cool, very like old west kind of thing, I guess. It takes a little bit of a getting used to adjustment wise. The big thing is because it's not, doesn't have the cartridge, is you can actually feel in your hand every little hair getting cut, which was weird. I thought it was like pulling the hair out or something. It was just a sensation I wasn't used to. I'm just making sure it's nice and taut and it doesn't have any like molds or anything I'm gonna cut but this will cut and you are allowed to use these, at least in Arizona. I don't know about wherever anybody else lives, but you can use them. You just wanna make sure they're nice and clean so you don't get anybody infections. I'll put this towel on him. We're getting a home stretch. I'm gonna put some pomade in there and let this guy go home and enjoy his weekend. I'm gonna hit this again with the cold air just to get it up again and also to get the clippings out of there. But I think it looks pretty good. I mean, it gets all nice and combed, but you can see the shapes there. There's nothing in it to the little spray. That's always what I'm trying to go for. I just wanna to try to make it look as good as I can before product. And then the product just helps accentuate what you did and make it look even better. But it shouldn't be the, the you have to have it. It needs to look good. You can see this hair already from where we started with it. It's just really nice and when I comb it, I think it just sweeps back real nice. Good head of hair, man. All right, this is a new Rusol, their newest pomade at least. It's the concrete 
I like this one. I forget what it smells like. Almost like a coconut kind of smell. But I feel like it's a good like middle of the road matte product as far as like hold. It's not the strongest stuff I got. Like this gray stuff is really strong. Um, but it's not really weak like say, you know, some of the stuff in the tubes like the cream or the styling paste. And I might use a little of the, I'll throw a little pink in there too. Their lines expanded like crazy since um, they came out. The first shop, before I had my own shop, the place I used to work at was called Mail Ego. Um, I begged my boss, because I just got back. Actually, it was before I went to Rotterdam. It was like, they, all they had was the red and the green can. And I was like, please let us carry this stuff. I'll sell it. I even said, I was like, I'll buy it if I don't sell it. She was like, yeah, we'll get it. She was really cool about it. Um, but that's all they had for a while was red and green. And I sold as much of that as I could. Um, but it was also just cool to, you know, so I'm pretty sure, we're, you know, I can't for 100% certainty say, but we were very early to pick it up. They didn't even have a distributor or anything yet to sell it. And then one day they came in, they're like, okay, you're going to stop buying it from the website. And you're going to get it through these guys. Cool. But that's all they had at first, red and green. Now they got, it. man, especially just pomade alone. They got a bunch of stuff. Um, my favorite's the green. I just like that one. And I like green. So but that's like a grease uh, shine. It's like a lighter hold grease pomade. And I also thought that was cool because there was... And understandably so. The, there were some old companies, barber companies, that still made petroleum-based pomades, but I hadn't seen anybody, in, I don't think, ever come out with new grease pomade. Now there's several companies that, that have, but at the time, I don't, I don't remember seeing that anywhere because um, water-based washes right out. So I was like, oh, man, that's cool. Let's see how this looks with just this one this through um, I tell clients you know especially and we're doing a video styling I can take more time I, I want it to be like just so will he get up and do that every day probably not especially when he's going to work and stuff but for a photograph or something like that I want it to be like everything is where I want it to be is that reality? No, absolutely not. But it's not the point. The point's just to show a cool haircut. Some people will take the time to do it. Like they want their hair to look just perfect every day. But most of my clients won't. Or if they're at work or something, they're probably wearing a hat. They're not even doing anything. But when he does, I want it to look good. Yeah, I'm gonna maybe use a little of the paint. The pink's a grease. That was the second one. That's the only other grease pomade they have, but stronger than the green. I mean, I think the Scorum barbers were the first ones I saw personally that were combining products. And then that got me, you know, it definitely got the wheels turning about what can I do with some of this stuff that we have. And at the time I didn't have my own shop. I was just at a shop. I was owned by somebody else, but it was like, what do, we, what do we got up here and what can I do potentially that's going to make this special with these products? And then also there's always a good chance, you know, I don't know if places people work, if they give you a little money for selling product, um, but, you know, I have had clients that will get all the stuff, you know, so if you have one pomade, that's great, but if you can show them like, hey, these are, I know you're buying two of these, but you know, you can combine them or use them separately and create different styles. I've sold more than one thing. As long as they're getting something out of it. I don't want to sell stuff to like, just to sell it. Like if I'm recommending it, it's because I think this is something that's going to help you accomplish what you want. But it definitely, I thought that was a cool idea for those reasons. Um, Spray a little of the spray on my comb here. I 
I'll switch sometimes between using the pick, using the comb, um, whatever it takes to make it look, especially for a photograph, you know, whatever I need to do to make it look the way I want. I do like the picks. Um, sometimes, you know, I'll just get it a bunch of times with the comb. And this makes me feel like super OCD. A lot of the time I'm just trying to make these teeth marks with the comb look uniform. That's tough sometimes. Or I may need to throw a little more pomade in there. I put a little of the spray on the comb just to lubricate the comb a little bit and make it go through the hair a little easier. His hair, it's just, a, he's got heavy hair. Sometimes it ends up looking less like a pompadour, a little more like a, like the exec, not the executive contour, the, um, what's the other one that they do on their poster? Uh, the Vanguard, which looks a lot like this, but it's just not as prominent in the front. It'll just be kind of like down, but. But a lot of these haircuts, it's more, it's kind of the same. I mean, even they've admitted that. Uh, Rob, I mean, guys are scoring but you know, the styling, and then, you know, there's variations on the lengths and fades. That's what makes it unique, but more or less the same shape, same haircut, just styled a bunch of different ways. Let's see, just a little more of this. And then I'm just gonna get around your ears one more time. I should get to go. Um, I don't know. I don't care if I have to get something at the last second. Um, I don't make any excuses for it. If it doesn't look the way I want it to look, I'm gonna get it. So I'm just gonna get it with these trimmers. Look at these little hairs I didn't get. You think you're awesome. It's like, there's always something you didn't get. It's like in a forever thing. Oh, I did it perfectly. And then you go like that, and you're like, no, you didn't, you asshole. Oh. And these long trims are cool, too. You don't have to come in all the time. And, you know, even a couple of months, you can push it. If you just don't like to get your cut as often, or can't. Can't get in as often. Okay. Long trim's good. Oh, and I didn't put the pink in there. I might put a little of the pink in the front part of this hair, just to get it to a little higher. You can see the consistency of this. It's like very sticky. It smells like bubble gum. I like it. But I'm not gonna go. This is one other thing I kind of like to. You, you don't even have to put it on all of his hair. Maybe especially this stuff. It's pretty strong. And he has the water based as a base, so it should wash right out. But let's say I just wanted to get the front part of his hair with this pink, or maybe just a little bit here on the sides, just to get it to really stay, you know. If he put, if I did all grease, it would take a little bit of time to get it out. Um, he would still feel the residual stickiness in his hair even after he washed it. Um, this has the water based on first, so this grease should wash right out. That was something, when I went to Rotterdam, I, uh, at the time, the guy was it was two guys at the school. It was Nalis and Bobby. Bobby showed me that, and I was like, I had this model. He had like a bunch of Murray's pomade in his hair, and that stuff was like impossible to get out. It was I could barely comb through it. <laughs> Bobby yelled at the dude, "Don't put much. Why are you putting so much shit in your hair?" But he told me to put at the time they were just getting ready to put out the the light blue Rusel. He's like, "Put some of that in there." And I'm like, "You want me to put more pomade in this guy's hair?" What the hell is that gonna do? And then he explained to me, he's like, because it's water-based, it'll help pull out the grease, which sounds so counterintuitive, but it works. And then if you wanna get this front, sometimes I'll just push it with my hand to get it to protrude a little more. And this is the part that I could really get overly critical on especially for photos. I want it to look, I you know, hope the photo looks good. So I'll be 
you can obsess over just combing it. You also take the comb, you can just push it. I think that looks pretty cool. The rest of this go back. But same as if I would do it with a pick, I'm just following comb, follow with the hand. But now it's really, like if I would have tried to do this before I cut it, it would not work. But I mean, it's got good hair. And then I'm gonna turn it around so you can check this out. All right, dude, I'll show you this here. Cool. Thanks, man.